Welcome to day two of our daily scripture reading. Today we're going to be reading from the book of Genesis chapter 1 and the book of Jubilees chapter 2. We're going to be going back and forth, reading a little bit from this book and a little bit from that book, and we're going to just kind of piece it all together, and it's really going to be an awesome study here. So let's, let's get right into this. I'm going to start out with the book of Ju Jubilees chapter 2. And the angel of the presence spake to Moshe, according to the word of the Lord, saying, Write the complete history of the creation, how in six days the Lord God had finished all his works and all that he created, and kept Shabbat, or kept Sabbath, on the seventh day, and hallowed it for all ages, and appointed it as a sign for all his works. Uh, first of all, I just want to, let, let's just go back here. The angel of the presence, very interesting phrase. And we see this phrase several times throughout the, throughout the scripture. The angel of the presence, the angel of the presence of the Lord spoke to Moses or Moshe, his Hebrew, his original Hebrew name, Moshe, according to the word of the Lord, saying, write the complete history of creation. Now here is very, I mean, a lot of people will just read this and skim over it. But this is very significant, that we've got a record here that an angel spoke to Moses and said, this is the word of the Lord, you know, more or less. You are supposed to write the history of creation. Okay? Now, we do have some, we do have passages in the Bible and perhaps even books in the Bible that are written without the commandment of God for it to be written. You know what I mean? Um, like, in other words, uh, the book of Revelation, the book of uh, Jeremiah, for example, um, the, the books uh, of uh, the Torah, for example. Now, we know that there are many times when God said, write this down, write this down, write this down. Now, when God says, write this down, that gives it a lot more authority. That gives it a lot more cr credibility because we've got the commandment of God to write it down. It's not just somebody else's idea to write it down. Not that it's bad that somebody has the idea to write something down, but uh, to really pin it down and to say this particular passage or this particular book is written on the commandment of God. It says, How in six days the Lord God had finished all his works that he created and kept Shabbat on the seventh day, kept Sabbath on the seventh day. So here we go. Uh, again, uh, this is also uh, throughout the scriptures. Several times we've got the seventh day being the Shabbat, okay? Not the first day, okay? Now, in our uh, calendar that we use today, uh, for the most part, in most parts of the world, we use the calendar, the Gregorian calendar, and uh, Sunday is the first day, and Saturday is, is the seventh day, okay? So the Sabbath is on the seventh day, not on the first day, okay? So we got here the Sabbath is on the, sa on the seventh day, not on the first day, and hollowed it for all ages, okay? It doesn't say that he made the Sabbath to be holy or hollowed or set apart or to be observed just until the Messiah comes, just until you know, Yeshua comes, it says it's to be hallowed for all ages. Again, very key thing here. We can't overlook. And appointed it as a sign for all his works, okay? It's, it's not only just a commandment. It's not only just an observance, but it's also a sign. And we're going to read about this. It's very interesting in this book, how the Sabbath day, how Shabbat is a sign. What is it a sign of, Okay. For on the first day he created the heavens which are above and, and the earth and the waters and all the spirits which serve before him. The angels of the presence, the angels of sanctification, the angels of the, angels of the spirit of fire and the angels of the spirit of the winds, the angels of the spirit of the clouds, of, of, the, of darkness and of snow and of hail and of hoarfrost and the angels of the voices of the thunder and of the lightning and the angels of the spirits of cold and heat, and of winter, and of spring, and of, and of autumn, and of summer, and of all the spirits of his creatures. The spirits of his creatures, meaning everything that lives, that has a spirit, you know. Um, 
you know, you and I, we both have spirits. If we're alive, we have spirits. It's the spirit that makes us alive. All the spirits of, the, all of his creatures, which are in the heavens and on the earth, and the abysses and the dark and the darkness and the evening and the evening or the eventide and the night and the light dawn and day which he hath prepared in the knowledge of his heart and thereupon we saw his works again we being the angels here speaking we saw his works and praised him and lauded him you know they worshiped him they praised him when they when they saw the works of god on account of all his works. You know, they praised him because of all of his works. For seven great works did he create on the first day. Okay, so here we got a, a lot of detail that we really don't have in the book of Genesis. Now we're going to go into the book of Genesis here in a, in a minute, but let's let's look at this for a second. Seven great works which he did which he did create on the on the first day, okay? What are those seven works? What are the seven categories or the seven things that he created? Well, let's go back and, and read this here. So it says up here, For on the first day he created the heavens, one, which are above, and the earth, two, and the waters, three, and all the spirits which serve before him, four. Okay, so all the spirits include all of the angels and the, and the spirits, the, the other spirits, the spirits of his creatures. That's four. Five, he created the abysses and darkness. The abysses meaning, uh, literally meaning the, the ocean depths or the darkness, the, deep, the depths of the oceans and the darkness. So the, the abysses and darkness is, is five. The evening and night is six. The light, dawn and day is seven. Very interesting. So, We've got seven great works here that God created on the first day. Okay, so let's skip on over to the book of Genesis and let's read this. Okay, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was on the face, the surface of the deep and, the, and God's spirit was hovering over the surface of the waters. God said, let there be light and there was light. God saw the light and saw that it was good. God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. There was evening and there was morning the first day. Okay, so here we got basically just a compacted version, but even in this passage here, we've got a few little clues that we don't have in the book of, Je uh, the book of Jubilees, excuse me. Now, it says here, God said, let there be light, okay? It doesn't say much about God speaking creation into existence in the book of Jubilees. Well, here it, here it does. It says, God said, let there be light, or literally, light be, you know, light exist, okay? And there was light. So, God created things by his word. So, this is one of the roots that Jesus or Yeshua got so much faith from and so much knowledge from in regards to his words. When he spoke, things happened because he fully understood and he fully, he fully knew and understood this whole concept of speaking in faith and, it, and those words would bring it into being. So God said, let there be light and there was light. Another thing here. God divided the light from the darkness, okay? Now, this is very crucial to, to understand. God, in certain circumstances, creates, or it's his will, I should say, to have division. He doesn't want the light and the darkness to be mingled together. He wants them to be divided. Um, he made it so that the light and the darkness are divided. He doesn't want them to be together. Okay. Jesus said, Yeshua said in another, in another uh, passage in scripture, he said, don't think that I've come to bring peace on the earth. I've come to bring a sword to divide this person from this person, to divide this person from this person, to divide this person from this. See, God wants division 
in certain circumstances, okay? Other circumstances, he wants unity, okay? When it comes to all of his children, all of his children being those who are not only believers, but those who are actually born of him, born of, of the Spirit, which are few and far between, by the way. He wants unity there, as, as Yeshua prayed in, in, uh, in John chapter 17 for unity. However, Yeshua also said that, you know, I pray for my sheep. I pray for these that you've given me, not for the world. Okay, so there, we, there again, we got division. Okay, in his prayer for unity, we have division. It's God's purpose and plan and will for there to, to be division in certain circumstances. If there was no division, there would be no separation. If there's no separation, there'd be no holiness. The word holiness actually means separate, to be set apart, to be separate from the world, to be separate from the way that other people think, to think differently than other people think. That is holiness, is being separate from the rest of the world. Division. So God divided the light from the darkness. And, uh, and there was evening and there was morning the first day. Again, uh, another tidbit here we should uh, keep in mind is that, you know, in the, in the Hebrew mindset, in the Jewish mindset, and in the scriptures, you know, I mean, it's all, it all comes from the Jews anyway. There... The, the days begin in the evening, okay? We see here the evening and the morning were the first day. So the evening came first, then the morning. That included the day. That was the day. That is what the day was comprised of. The evening first, the morning second, okay? The darkness first, so to speak, the light second. As it says, first comes the natural, then comes the spiritual. But here we got the evening and the morning. So, you know, in, in most calendars today... Uh, we, we have the, the next day beginning at midnight. Uh, not so when it comes to the Bible. Not so when it comes to the scriptures. Not so when it comes to, in, when it comes to this context. It begins with the evening. And you, we see this when it comes to Jewish circles. And where we see that the day begins in the evening. Okay, and The day begins at sundown in the evening. Uh, and lasts until the next sundown. So uh, in this context, we talked a little bit about the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day would begin Friday evening and last until Saturday evening. Okay, so let's go on to day two. We'll go back to the book of Jubilees. And on the second day, he created the firmament in the midst of the waters. The firmament being here meaning the expanse or like the, the sky you know, the, the atmosphere, so to speak, you know, between space and, and the earth. This is the firmament in the midst of the waters. And the waters were divided. Again, we got, we're talking about division on that day. Half of them went above and, and half went down below the firmament. Just as a little side note here, I don't believe that we're talking about literally every drop counted as this is half, this is half. I think it's talking about, generally speaking, half the waters went up, half the waters went down. When it talks about the half the waters went up, it is talking about being evaporated into the atmosphere. The, the, the waters, the moisture in the air, the clouds that carry the, the moisture in the water. Okay, And the half of them that are underneath the firmament would be you know, like the, the oceans and the seas and the rivers and such. So half of them went up above and half went down below the firmament that was in the midst over the face of the whole earth. And this was the only work God created on the second day. So he did four works, or excuse me, he did seven works on the first day, but only one work on the second day. Okay, let's go back to the book of Genesis and see what the book of Genesis says about this. God said, let there be an expanse, or again, a firmament, in the middle of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Here we go again, dividing the waters from the waters, the waters which are airborne, as opposed to the waters which are on the earth. God made the expanse and divided the waters which were under the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse, and it was so. God called the expanse sky. There was evening and there was morning, a second day. 
Let's go back to the book of Jubilees, talking about the third day. And on the third day, he commanded the waters to pass off the face of the whole earth into one place and, and the dry land to appear. Once again, very interesting. So at that point in time, the second day, that is, there was no dry land that appeared. It was just waters over the earth. Okay. And so on the third day, he commanded that the waters be again separated from the land. The, the dry land appear and the waters be separated from the, the land. And the, the waters did so as he commanded them. And they retired off the face of the earth into one place outside of this firmament. And the dry land appeared. And on that day, he created for them all the seas according to their separate gathering places and all the rivers and the gatherings of the waters in the mountains and on all the earth and all the lakes and all the dew of the earth and the seed which is sown and all sprouting things and fruit bearing trees and trees of wood and the garden of Eden in Eden and all plants kind thereafter. Okay, so Wow, there's a lot of information here that we don't get from the book of Genesis. So on that day, he created all the seas. Okay, that's very clear in the book of Genesis. Uh, and, the, and the lakes and such. But all the sprouting things here, all the sprouting things, the fruit-bearing trees, and trees of wood, and the Garden of Eden. Now, this is specifically mentioned in the book of Jubilees, which is not mentioned in the book of Genesis. So God created the Garden of Eden on the third day and all the plants kind thereafter. In other words, he created the plants according to their kinds. That's what it means. These four great works God created on the third day. Okay, again, let's go in to see what the four great works were. Okay, so the first work was that he commanded the waters to be to pass off from the face of the earth and he divided the land from the water so to speak the second work he created the dew of the earth the third work he created the seed which is sown and all sprouting things and the fourth work he created the trees and the garden of eden okay so those are the four works that god created on the third day Let's go back to the book of Genesis and see what the book of Genesis says about the third day. God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together to one place and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the, of the water he called seas. God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth yield grass, herb yielding seeds and fruit trees bearing fruit after their kind with their seeds in it. On the earth, and it was so. The earth yielded grass, herb yielding seeds, herb yielding seed after their kind, and trees bearing fruit with their seeds in it after their kind. And God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning, a third day. And here again, we got, you know, just like a general overview of what happened, whereas the book of Jubilees goes into a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go to the book of Jubilees and see, and see what it says about the fourth day. So on the fourth day, we'll start up here. On the fourth day, he created the sun and the moon and the stars and set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon all the earth and to rule over the day and the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Shabbats, or Sabbaths, and for months, and for feasts, and for years, and for Sabbaths of years, and for Jubilees, and for all seasons of the years. And it divided the light from the darkness, and for prosperity, that all things may prosper, which shoot and grow on the earth. These three kinds he made on the fourth day. So what are the three kinds again? The three kinds are the sun, the moon, and the stars. Those are the three kinds that God created on the fourth day. He created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Those are the three kinds that God created on the, on the fourth day. Okay, let's go over to the book of Genesis. 
And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to divide the day from the night, and let, it, let them be for signs to mark seasons, days, and years, and let them be for lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light to the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. Now, let's go over to, again, the book of Jubilees and, and see what it says about the fifth day. Right here, starting right here. And on the fifth day, he created great sea monsters in the depths of the waters. For these were the first things of flesh which were created by his hands. The fish and everything that moves in the waters and everything that flies, the birds and all their kind, and the sun rose over them to prosper them. In other words, to make them healthy and, and such, to give them food, to prosper them. And above everything that was on the earth, everything that shoots out of the earth, and all the fruit-bearing trees and all flesh, these three kinds he created on the fifth day. The book of Genesis says, God said, let the waters abound with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth in the open expanse of the sky. God created the large sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarmed after their kind, and every winged bird after its kind. God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. There was evening and there was morning, a fifth day. Now the book of Jubilees says, And on the sixth day he created all the animals of the earth, and all cattle, and everything that moves on the earth. And, and after all this he created man. A man and a woman created he them. So right here, uh, it's very specific here when it says man, it's talking about uh, a man and a woman. Now this is not always the case, we just got to take it into context here. We got to take everything into context when we're reading the scripture. So right here he says he created man, a man and a woman, he created them. So mankind here could be translated mankind, okay? He created them and gave him dominion over all that is upon the earth and in the seas and over everything that flies and over, and over beasts and over cattle and over everything that moves on, on the earth. And over the whole earth and over all this, he gave him dominion. So originally, God had dominion. He gave that dominion, not all of his dominion, but he gave that dominion to man, to mankind. And these four kinds he created on the sixth day. Okay, so what are the four kinds that he created on the sixth day? Well, it says here, if we go back, it says here, he created the sea monsters in the depths. For these were the first things of flesh that were created by his hands, the fish and everything that moves in the waters and everything that flies, number two, the birds of the air of all their kind. And the sun rose to prosper them. It says he also, he created all animals of the earth. That's number three. And then of course, he created human beings, number four. So those were the four kinds that he created on the sixth day. So let's go back to the book of Jew, uh, excuse me, the book of Genesis, and read what it says here. God said, again, you know, you look at it every single day. God said he created by speaking. He created by speaking, and also in context, God created also by faith. He spoke, and he spoke in faith, and he spoke in power. Again, this is how Yeshua operated as well, because he read this, you know, he read these passages and he knows his father. So God said, let the earth produce living creatures after their kind, livestock, creeping things, and animals of the earth after their kind. And it was so. 
God made the animals of the earth after their kind and the livestock after their kind and everything that creeps on the ground after its kind. God saw that it was good. God said, let's make man in our image. Okay. Now, if you were to go into other um, translations or if you were to just look into the original manuscripts here, Let's here, and we see the apostrophe here, here is, is standing for, you know, an abbreviation, which means let us. God said, let, let us make man in our image. Very interesting. So God here uh, is a being that is not just a one person. God is, is a being, which is God is one. However, God is more like a company. Let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. Okay. After our likeness. Again, we got uh, our here. God didn't say after my likeness. He said after our likeness. So let us make man in our image. Because God here comes from the Hebrew word Elohim which is plural of gods, okay? Um, Eloah is God in the singular form, is God in the singular form. Eloah is God in the singular form, whereas Elohim is God in a plural form. So most of the time, almost every time you see the word God in the English Bible, it, it is translated from the Hebrew word Elohim, which could be literally translated as the gods or gods. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In God's image, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Here we go again. Now, we saw this before in the book of Jubilees. Now, here we see it here in the book of Genesis. You know, he says, uh, God created man in his own image. God, male and female, he created them, okay? So here we got male and female included together in that one word, man. Again, I need to stress, it's not always that way, okay? We got to read it in context because a lot of times the scriptures say man. It's talking about literally a man, not a woman, okay? In this context, obviously it's talking about a man and a woman, Verse 28, God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. Okay, uh, very interesting. I had somebody ask me this the other day, you know, in the, uh, in the Old King James, it says, uh, replenish the earth. It sounds like replenish, which means it used to be plenished before, but now it's not. That is not what the Hebrew says here. The Hebrew word that's translated replenish in the, the English literally means to fill. It also can, it can mean to refill, but not always. Here it talks about filling, obviously, for the first time. And subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb yielding seed. The word behold here simply means look at, pay attention to this. Hey, look at this. This is what it means. Look at this. Look at this. I have given you every herb yielding seed, which is on the face, the surface of all the earth, and every tree which bears fruit yielding seed. It will be for your food. It will be your food. To every animal of the earth and to every bird of the sky, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he made, and behold, look, pay attention to this, it was very good. There was evening and there was morning, a sixth day. Okay? So, just want to say something very um, quickly here. Some people believe that before the fall, Adam and Eve were vegetarians because it says here that they only, uh, they only, it doesn't say they only ate uh, herbs, but it says they ate herbs for food, okay? It doesn't say that, that uh, 
that they ate anything else, but that doesn't mean that they didn't eat any, anything else. Now, we'll see later on that there are clues that they did actually eat meat. Now, there is clues in there, okay? We'll read that on another day. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. There was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Let's go back to the book of Jubilees. The book of Jubilees says, And there were altogether twenty-two kinds. Okay, now, um, very interesting, because the book of Jubilees is all about counting, okay? There's a lot of counting. The, the author of the book of Jubilees loved to record things, like to count things. This is interesting because if you were to go back, if you were to go back, okay, you know, we read on the first day, there was seven kinds that was created. The second day, one, you know, and so on and so forth. Okay, you add them all up, there were, there's 22 kinds that God created during all of creation. And he finished all his work on the sixth day. All that is in the heavens and all that's, and on the earth and in the seas and the abysses and in the light and in the darkness and in everything, he gave us a great sign, a, the Sabbath day, that we should work six days, but keep Shabbat on the seventh day from all work. And all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification, these two great classes, he hath bidden us to keep the Sabbath with him in heaven and on earth. Very very awesome. It says here, the angels of God also kept the Sabbath. Also kept the Sabbath. And he said to us, behold, again, look, pay attention to this. I will separate unto myself a people from among all the peoples. Again, let's stop here for a second. Again, here we go. We're talking about division, separation. Now, there are times when God wants separation. And in this particular circumstance, in this particular context, He wants separation. It's all about being holy. Let's read it again. I will separate unto myself a people from among all the peoples. Okay? So He created all the peoples, but He said, I want to separate a certain people apart from these other people. Okay? And these shall keep the Sabbath day. And I will sanctify them unto myself as my people and will bless them as I have sanctified the Sabbath and do sanctify unto myself. Even so will I bless them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. Very sounds very familiar to New, New Testament passage here where it says, I will be their people and they shall be my God. And I have chosen the seed of Jacob from amongst all that I have seen. I have written him down as my firstborn son and have sanctified him unto myself forever and ever. And I will teach them the Sabbath day that, that they may keep Shabbat or Sabbath thereon from all work. And thus he created therein a sign in accordance with, with which they should keep Sabbath with us on the seventh day to eat and to drink and to bless him who has created all things as he blessed and sanctified unto himself a peculiar people um, above all peoples, and that they should keep Shabbat together with us. And he caused his commands. Okay, now here we got the answer to our question earlier on. It's like, what does the Sabbath day signify? What is it a sign of? It's the sign of the people of God. Just as the seventh day, just as the, the, the Shabbat was separated from the rest of the days, just as you're supposed to keep it holy, so the people of God are supposed to be holy from the world. So the seventh, the seventh day, Shabbat, Sabbath, is a sign of the holiness of God's people. Very powerful. And he caused his commands to ascend as a sweet savor acceptable before him all the days. Like John said, his commands are not burdensome. His commands are sweet. They're not, it's not bondage. It's not, it's not like God just put bondage on his people. 
No, he wouldn't call. You think that God called his people out of Egypt? Think is God, you think God called people out of bondage just to put them into bondage? No, it is his commands are a sweet savor, acceptable before him all the day. So we need to look at the commands of God as God looks at, at the commands of God. Sweet, holy, pure, lovely. There were two and twenty heads of mankind from Adam to Jacob. In other words, there were 22 rulers from Adam to Jacob. Now, we read before there were 22 different kinds that God created on, on, you know, in creation. 22 different heads of mankind from Adam to, J- to Jacob. It says also here, 22 kinds which he made unto the seventh day. Let me also bring this fact down here that it's not explicitly mentioned here, but there are also 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet with which, you know, the scriptures were mainly written in Hebrew. This is blessed and holy, and the former also is blessed and holy. And this one serves with that one for sanctification and blessing. And to this, Jacob and his seed, it was granted that they should always be the blessed and holy ones of the first testimony and law now very interesting here this is one thing we need to really understand okay there is a difference between testimony and law the testimony the testament the the covenant okay testimony and law there are two different things two different things testimony and law a lot of christians don't don't understand that they think the old testament is the law no it's not it is one the old testament is one testament out of a, out of a multitude of testaments that is that is found between the books of Genesis and Malachi. There is a difference between a testimony and the law, and the testimony and the law are two different things. Even as he sanctified and blessed the seventh, the Sabbath day on the seventh day, he created heaven and earth and everything that he created in six days. And God made the seventh day holy for all his works. Therefore, he commanded on its behalf that whoever does any work thereon shall die. And that he who defiles it shall surely die. Wherefore, do thou command the children of Israel to observe this day, that they may keep it holy and not do thereon any work, and not to defile it, as it is holier than all other days." And whoever profanes it shall surely die. And whoever does thereon any work shall surely die eternally. That the children of Israel may observe this day throughout their generations and not be rooted out of the land. Now let me just stop right there. This particular phrase, shall surely die eternally. This is not talking about physical death per se. This is talking about spiritual death. This is talking about dying and this is talking about living in a state of eternal death so let's continue for it is a holy day and a blessed day and everyone who observes it and keeps shabbat thereon from all his work will be holy and blessed throughout all days like unto us declare and say to the children of israel the law of this day both that they should keep the sabbath day thereon and that they should not forsake it in the error of their hearts and that it is not lawful to do any work thereon, which is unseemly, to do thereon their own pleasure, and that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk, and that it is not lawful to draw water, or to bring in or to take out thereon through their gates any burden, which they have not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwellings, And they shall not bring in nor take out from house to house on that day. For that day is more holy and blessed than any jubilee day of the jubilees. On this day we kept the Sabbath in the heavens before it was made known to any flesh to keep Sabbath thereon on the earth. And the creator of all things blessed it. And he did not sanctify all peoples and nations to keep Sabbath thereon, but Israel alone. Them alone he permitted to eat and drink and to keep Shabbat thereon on the earth. And the creator of all things blessed this day, which he had created 
for blessing and holiness and glory above all days. This law and testimony was given to the the children of Israel as a law forever unto their generations. Okay? Once again, we see here forever. This law and the testimony. Okay? So this is talking about two different things here. The law and the testimony was given to the children of Israel to be observed forever. Forever. So this concludes day two of our scripture reading. Thanks for watching and be blessed.